What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm bringing you a brand new Skyrim build brought to life by mods so that she can be excellent at bringing others back to life with her powerful necromancy. The Thrallmaster is quite the deranged character, a build that uses a trio of heavily enhanced dead thralls to decimate all who stand in her path. She's a master archer too, perfectly capable of independently using a bound bow to turn her foes into ethereal pincushions. That said, there's no reason to go without some help, especially Especially from those she can trust. Sure, a failed reanimation summon can be problematic, but for a master like her, dead thralls are far more reliable than humans, mortals with egos, agendas, and manipulative tendencies. The Thrallmaster is fascinated by the dark arts, although her interest in necromancy came about in quite unfortunate circumstances, as you'll soon hear. If you've played Skyrim many times before, you can easily sort out how to play the Thrallmaster build without mods at all. If you're going to do so, I highly recommend you listen to our recent video on who is the strongest dead thrall in Skyrim. We're using very similar thralls to our final answer, although due to mod-related perks, we can exceed the level cap of the vanilla game spell, improving our thrall options even further. Our build is being played on level 56 in the video, and our total perks will reflect this. I'll explain mods as they're relevant, and if you want the full essential mods list to play this build, it's in the description below. Also, if you want more builds on the channel, please let us know by supporting the video with a like, but only if you enjoy this build, of course. Now let's kick things off with the race, Standing Stone, Stats, and Worship. The Thrallmaster is a Breton, born in the east of High Rock. Due to the Imperious Races of Skyrim mod, this means you'll begin your adventure with 95 health, 105 magicka, and 100 stamina. As a Breton, you'll also have some bonuses to consider. A notable one is the Spell Mantle effect, which gives you 15% magic resistance, and when your magicka is 25% or less, you also gain 25% spell absorption. If you discover 10 Standing Stones, there's also an unlockable power called Shared and ancestry, which lets you temporarily gain the racial power of a target man or mer. It can only be used once per day. Then my favorite, Stones of Galen. This active effect makes each standing stone grant its own bonus effect. So the Thrallmaster is using the Shadow Stone. Due to the Andromeda unique standing stones of Skyrim mod, this will increase our movement speed in combat by a massive 20%. This is actually quite useful as the Thrallmaster plays like a combat archer. The Shadow Stone will also make sneaking and sneak attacks 20% more effective when near a wall or obstacle. There's also an unlockable power called Shadow Step, allowing you to spend 50 points of stamina to dash to a nearby target within 75 feet. Finally, there's the additional bonus we get thanks to Stones of Galen, which is that our sneak attacks have a 20% chance to deal double damage. Again, you won't be doing these all the time, but when you do, the bonus ends up very useful over the long run. Then this build actually uses the Winter Sun Faiths of Skyrim mod to worship the divine form of Mana Marco. You gain his favor by praying only at night, trapping souls, and practicing conjuration. Make sure you never accept Arke's blessing either. The shrine blessing makes conjuration spells 10% more effective. Then there's Follower Dark Moon, which makes undead conjured at night last longer based on your current favor with Mana Marco. And finally, if you get to 100% favor, you unlock the Nocturne bonus, which makes allied conjured undead deal more attack damage and regenerate more health based on current favor with Mana Marco. As for stats, the Thrallmaster has a changing spell split, dependent on her game stage. Until you're about level 30, you're going to go 50-50 into Magicka and Health. Once you've got 250 points of Magicka, this will satisfy all requirements in combination with our enchanting choices, which we'll explain later. Due to a perk choice, this amount is also enough to grant us the final additional Dead Thrall, letting the Thrallmaster command three at once. Once you've got 250 Magicka, we ignore it and adopt a 50-50 split into Health and Stamina. The Thrallmaster was born and raised in the city of Evermore in in High Rock. She had a lavish upbringing with all the wealth one could need. Her mother, sweet and loving, spent her days maintaining a pristine home and caring for the young Thrallmaster. Her father was a court advisor of high esteem, cold and calculated. He handled all matters of the kingdom's commerce, a lucrative position which he achieved through some questionable methods and scheming. Unfortunately, the Thrallmaster's mother died in a freak accident, leaving her to the care of her father, or rather servants at her father's command. However, there was a hidden truth to this freak accident. In reality, her father had an affair with the wife of a court noble, and her mother had found out. Her mother threatened to spill this secret to the court should he not clean up his act. Of course, she was bluffing, though. Compromising her husband's position would only leave her and her daughter in poverty. Regardless, the Thrallmaster's father was not one to take chances. Her mother's untimely demise would occur with an assisted slip off the edge of a cliff into the rocky valley below. The father recovered the body, faking devastation and having her buried in the city graveyard. The other 
risk factor for her father was the husband of the noblewoman he was involved with. He knew the nobleman had an interest in magic and was known for a few eccentricities, so through a few paid lips and hands, he orchestrated a narrative that painted him as a necromancer. Her father even had criminals rob the local graveyard of bones and trinkets and had them placed in his chambers. The evidence was undeniable, and the noble was forced to flee the city. All loose ends were tied up, and life went on. The rest of her youth was spent growing distant from her father. He was always busy leaving her to her own devices. A childhood with no warmth and affection developed a more ruthless and manipulative personality. She made friends with undesirables, such as a low-class hunter's boy, who taught her how to use a bow and likely a few other things. Her father found out, but didn't seem to care. He was too busy organizing his marriage to the noblewoman he had an affair with. After all, she was without a husband, and the child of that union would be of great political advantage. The Thrallmaster was left to her own devices and developed a knack for archery. She took on a job with the guard, first as a sentry, but eventually she was a professional escort for nobles, diplomats, and merchants. Then later, as a young adult, she was sent with teams to take down threats to the kingdom, such as groups of rogues, bandits, and orcs. She was sent with the city's best warriors, who generally kept her safe. Eventually, the Thrallmaster was sent to take down a more iniquitous target. Rumors had reached kingdom officials suggesting that a necromancer was operating out of a lair to the north. Upon arriving, she felt nervous to be in a cave without her ranged advantage, but she trusted the warriors sent with her to do their thing. The caverns inside were eerily quiet, and the walls were adorned with various necromantic banners, with fur rugs littering some of the floors. There was also the unmistakable stench of death. The silence was soon replaced by screams of terror as the entire group walked straight into a pit trap that had been covered by a large carpet. The Thrallmaster landed on top of an armored ally, and the entire group was left impaled by various spikes. The Thrallmaster felt her lower back cut up and bleeding, but it seemed she had fared the best. The rest were either dead or dying fast, and it wasn't long before a necromancer greeted them. Knowing they'd all be dead soon, he grinned, but upon seeing the Thrallmaster, his expression changed. She looked far too similar to the wife of the man that had ruined his life. It must be their daughter, all grown up. He quickly cast healing spells to fix her wounds before hitting her with paralysis magic. For a week, the Thrallmaster was trapped in a holding cell, and it was revealed to her that this necromancer was the noble her father once framed, only that his suspicions were true. Instead of killing her, he would use her to get revenge, to turn daughter on father, and to ruin his reputation. The necromancer began to reveal to the Thrallmaster all the misdoings her father had done in the kingdom. He even revealed that the father had cheated on her mother with his wife, but said that by the time he found out about it, her father had already begun to frame him. He suspected the father had killed his wife to reduce risk of future damage to his reputation, and told the Thrallmaster very convincingly that this was true. Due to her father's suspicions being proven true, it was hard to gain her trust, but as time went by, she was slowly turned, especially when the necromancer offered to prove it. He told her stories of the most powerful necromancers, claiming they could raise the dead back to their mortal form. They could cheat mortality. The most interesting was his his story of Manamarco, a necromancer so gifted he apparently ascended to a divine form, becoming the necromancer's moon and being worshipped by necromancers across the continent. He said his powers weren't anywhere near these legendary levels yet, but he still could help. He would take the Thrallmaster to her mother's grave and perform a ritual with various ingredients, which ends with someone related by blood to the fallen casting a reanimation spell. It would bring the skeleton to life and allow it to speak calmly through a kind of spirit magic. The thought made her sick, but her curiosity was in overdrive, and so she agreed to learn the spell. Her situation wasn't the best for clear thinking, and she didn't really have a choice. She was unarmed and trapped with a necromancer, and so she was taken under the cover of night to the graveyard, only this time it was not her bringing the flowers. He dug up the skeleton, placed his own flowers and other items around, and began his ritual. At the end of it, the terrified Thrallmaster cast her spell, and the skeleton of her mother came to life. To her horror, the mouth of the skeleton swung open and a yell screeched out cursing her father's name and asking why. The necromancer was taken by surprise as the skeleton tackled him to the ground, gouging out his eyes with its bony fingertips. The Thrallmaster watched on in horror as the skeleton picked up the man by his head and using just one hand repeatedly smashed his skull into another gravestone. The Thrallmaster ran screaming with her undead mother chasing, seething with an unnaturally hostile rage. Luckily for the Thrallmaster, her mother quickly crumbled into dust. After breaking down into tears on the cold dirt below, she composed herself and took the now empty satchel the necromancer brought the ingredients in and swept her mother's ashes inside. 
Feeling exhausted, she headed to a nearby inn, further from the city, to sleep. She couldn't bear to see her father yet, but in the morning she knew what she'd do. Arriving home, she got another bow and some arrows and went to see her father. Instantly recognized in the courtroom where her father was giving a speech, she declared the necromancer was dead, but then revealed to everyone what she learnt, causing an uproar. Her father, standing at a podium, declared her brainwashed and insane, which due to her frantic state seemed very convincing. He immediately said he can't believe she grave robbed her own mother. He his ex-wife with a proven necromancer. He was fast to point out that she'd admitted to committing the crimes of working with an outlaw, grave robbing the city, and unlawfully raising the dead. She, however, had zero evidence that he'd done anything wrong, and so the guards came to arrest her, at least temporarily for questioning. She had failed to convince them, and knowing she wouldn't be able to, she draws her bow, rapidly firing an arrow into the head of the man who raised her. He fell, bleeding by the podium, eyes open as if he was watching her as she fled from the castle, stole a horse, and left the city behind. In the span of 24 hours, the Thrallmaster saw her skeleton mother try to kill her, found out her father killed her mother when she was a child, then saw him try to have her imprisoned when she found out what happened, and then experienced putting an arrow in his face, forcing her to leave the kingdom she'd spent her whole life in with nothing but the ashes of her dead mother. It's no wonder that as the Thrallmaster fled east as fast as possible and ended up in Skyrim, her mind degraded into a frantic, unstable state. She wanted to do things over. She wanted to do her whole life over. To to have a mother and to have the father she thought she had, one who may be a bit cold but still loved her and would never do anything so evil. The entire incident leads the Thrallmaster to develop significant trust issues, feeling that her judgement of others can never be certain. It pushes her more into striving for independence so that she doesn't have to rely on others and generally gives her a bleak outlook on life. She longs to feel a love she can hardly remember and is constantly pained by what has happened. Due to this, she will treat others without care, numb to the emotions that those around her feel. She will have no strong sense of morality, open to do all kinds of things, not because she's evil, but because she simply doesn't care, and because she's going a little bit crazy. To others, she may appear deranged, and this is only furthered by her continued pursuit of necromancy. Yes, the Thrallmaster will continue to pursue necromancy, curious to find a way to bring her mother back to life, using her ashes and the techniques of powerful necromancers, like those from the stories she was told while trapped in the cage. Her will to live will be sustained by this curiosity, as she master's necromancy. By the time she learns the dead thrall spell, she will be devastated that she cannot save her mother with it, but finds good use in her enhanced abilities. She'll also be sad to learn that her thralls don't act like mortals, but hopes that one day she'll learn a way or meet someone who can actually make them act as they did while they lived. In hope of furthering her powers to such levels, she'll also be worshipping Mana Marco as outlined in the Standing Stone and Stats section of the video, where we discussed the faith-related mod. When the thrall master discovers her dragonborn powers, it will lead her to fulfill the prophecy as a way of searching for more meaning in her life. That said, deep down, she just can't heal. And if given the opportunity to become a lich and live eternally, she'd actually turn it down. She'll live out the rest of her days studying the dark arts and taking on new challenges to make life less boring until she eventually dies of old age or in combat. Upon arriving in Skyrim, she kills some local bandits, disposes the bodies, and takes over their camp, equipping their bow and arrows and wearing some fur armor she found. You'll want to pick the alternate start mod option, I am camping in the woods. You'll want to join the College of Winterhold to further your conjuration abilities and do the main storyline, the Dragonborn DLC and the Dawnguard DLC, seeing what you can learn of necromancy from joining the Volkahar vampires in their questline. Due to not wanting to live forever, you will want to cure your vampirism afterwards. You'll want to investigate anything involving the dead, the undead souls, and the afterlife. This means you'll want to do quests even if they involve killing other necromancers, such as the one with Lua Alskaven. There's plenty of quests in Skyrim with necromancers, so you'll have lots to do. Think of stuff like the Wolf Queen Awakened, toying with the dead and ancestral worship. Various Daedric Prince quests are also fitting, and I recommend doing Azura's quest and getting the Black Star. It also makes sense to obey Hermaeus Mora's wishes, as he could theoretically bestow powerful necromancy knowledge to help you. The Thrallmaster will also have a curious spot for helping distressed mothers and wronged women, so you can do quests like Blood on the Ice, which also gets you the Necromancer Amulet, a neat trinket for safekeeping. This build doesn't have many political ideals, so feel free to help whoever you want in the Civil War, or just leave it alone and enjoy the chaos. You can also use the limited sneak perks we do have to do the Dark Brotherhood questline, but try not to bring thralls on stealth missions. The skills this build will be mastering are Archery, Conjuration, Sneak, Light Armor, Smithing, and Enchanting. As for spells, the Thrall Master has a very clean setup. You'll end up with Dead Thrall for your thralls, but you'll have other reanimation spells from before you were a Master too. You'll have the Bound Bow spell to summon your weapon, and also the Spark spell to electrify recently reanimated thralls, which is something we'll talk about. For shouts, I recommend
recommend keeping Unrelenting Force handy to quickly tap and stagger enemies who get too close. Other fitting options would be Summon Dernavir and Saltair. As for perks from the Ordinator Perks of Skyrim mod, I'll show the full list on screen as I explain the most important ones from each skill. Our archery perks are designed to enhance an up-close and personal combat archer approach. In the heat of the moment, three ranks of Steady Hand will allow you to slow time drastically and zoom with your aim, giving you more time to think and place shots in fast-paced moments. There's also a great perk which stacks called Crippling Shot. Being up close and within 25 feet of enemies, which we will be, it will slow targets hit by 10% for 20 seconds. The Ranger perk lets us move at full speed with a drawn bow, which is incredibly important for our zippy playstyle. And then the Hailstorm perk boosts our DPS by making us attack 8% faster for 10 seconds after shooting a fully drawn bow. And as you'd hope, this effect stacks. In Conjuration, we've got a whole load of perks to optimize our use of reanimations and to enhance our bound bow. Here's what's the most important. When you've got all perks relevant to the bound bow, it will cast Soul Trap on targets, banish Conjured Daedra, turn reanimated undead, deal 100 extra damage to non-Conjured Daedra, and reduce magic resistance by 60% for 5 seconds after a hit. Strikes with bound weapons also result in enemies having their stamina and magicka drained by 15 points per second for 5 seconds, with the regeneration of these stats halted also. If both these stats are depleted, they start taking 15 points of magic damage to their health per second instead. Striking a target will also grant us 20% attack damage and 100 more points of armor rating for 5 seconds. Due to the Soul Raider perk, all these bound weapon perks will actually last twice as long after you trap 250 souls. How about thralls? Well, it's important to note that due to Ravenous Dead, the level cap of reanimation spells and effects is increased by 1% per level of conjuration, eventually resulting in 100%. Our perks also allow us to have a total of 3 minions once we have 250 points of base magicka, although if you don't have any minions, you lose 250 points of armor and 50% magic resistance, but we'll have them all the time anyway. As an archer that gets up close and personal, often sticking near the squad of thralls, the undead crown perk is sensational, restoring 10 points of health and magicka per second to reanimated undead within 15 feet. Also, if your thralls do die, keep that sparks spell around, as if you reanimate them again, you can hit them with shock magic within 30 seconds which will do no damage and cause them to attack 250% faster and move 50% faster for 10 seconds. Finally, Necromaster raises the level cap of powerful reanimation spells by 100% and very importantly, lets you manipulate the inventory of your thralls and equip items. We'll talk about our thrall choices in the gear section. This build will use stealth when needed to make enemies focus on thralls while picking others off or just to open up a battle with a high damage shot. It's not a constant part of the playstyle, just something you use here and there when you can tell it's strategic. We've just got both ranks of the basic sneak mastery perk, but then we've got fog of war. What this perk does is make sneaking 15% more effective against targets that are in combat with you, but 30% if they are in combat with someone else, which of course will be your thralls. It's a similar deal with light armor as we just take the two light armor mastery perk ranks to help protect us a bit more and then get light armor fit, which if you're wearing all light armor increases the armor rating by 25%. In smithing, we basically just make our way up to both ranks of the planar smithing perk so we can make and enhance daedric and dragon based gear for our kitted out thralls we've also made sure we chose the right perk so you can craft and enhance your robes which come in a light armor variant enchanting is useful for similar reasons allowing the thrall master to enchant her thralls armor and weaponry and to do the same for her apparel she can't enchant her bound bow or smith it up but luckily she can fortify her archery skill increasing bow damage that way twin enchantments lets you put two enchantments on your items and your thralls items and with the Miracle perk, you'll be able to put three enchantments on one item just one time, and they're 25% stronger. I recommend putting it on a necklace for yourself or putting it on your favorite thrall's weapon. Also, make sure to use the Arcane Nexus, acquired from the perk of the same name. After upgrading a normal Arcane Enchanter with this and 2,500 gold, you'll be able to use it to make enchantments 25% stronger. Put it all together and you get a playstyle that involves strong preparation before battle and a fast, in-their-face style of fighting when you're actually in combat. You'll want to summon your bound bow out of enemy hearing range and then often you'll use sneak mode to unleash a powerful strike to start the battle, but then you'll want to get into the thick of the action with your three highly prepared, super enhanced thralls who will use a combination of magic and melee damage to devastate foes, with their presence providing you with buffs and yours boosting them also. Stick with your undead team and put as many arrows in foes as possible. 
Use fully drawn shots to damage enemies, benefiting from a variety of perks and other effects that will increase your attack speed and movement speed and stack. When enemies get in your face, feel free to use bash or shouts like unrelenting force. You can use other reanimation spells as needed, but never lose track of your favorite thrall's bodies. You wouldn't want to lose them. And remember, if a thrall does die, you can always bring them back with dead thrall and then hit them with sparks right after, electrifying them and sending them into a merciless overdrive. As for gear, it should be noted that all of your own gear and everything for thralls that I mention in this section should be smithed up to max potential. The Thrall Master's aesthetic comes from the Black Mage Armor SE mod. You'll be able to smith it yourself and you'll want to get the light armor variant of the Black Mage Arm Guards, Boots, Hood with Scarf, and Mantled Robes. It's all light armor except for a cosmetic piece called Black Mage Mask, which covers the lower half of your face and looks really cool. You'll then want to wear a necklace and ring of your choice for enchanting purposes. You'll want Fortify Archery and Conjuration on the ring, the hood, and the necklace. If you use the Miracle perk on yourself, you can add Fortify Magicka to that necklace. On the Arm Guards, put Fortify Archery and Fortify Magicka. For the boots, go with Fortify Sneak and Resist Shock. On the robes, get Fortify Conjuration and Fortify Health. And then for a bit of overkill, enchant the mask with Fortify Archery and an enchantment of your choice. As for thralls, I don't have time to explain everything about them that I did in the Best Dead Thrall video, which you should definitely go and watch to understand all the research that goes into it, but just know that thrall aggression and AI is incredibly important. Due to this, I have chosen to go with one bandit chief marauder who specializes in one-handed and block. Kit thralls out in any of the most powerful armor in the game. I've gone with a full set of Daedric, including a shield with a dragonbone war axe for my bandit. My vampire thralls have a full set of dragon scale, including the shield with that same war axe. All the war axes were enchanted with absorb health and absorb stamina. And if you want to use the miracle perk on one of them, you could add chaos damage to the bandit chief's axe to make them even more unstoppable. Vampires turn out to be arguably the best dead thralls in Skyrim, and because our thrall level cap was increased due to mod-related perks, we didn't have to settle for an ancient vampire or a Volkhar vampire. Instead, we went with one Nightlord vampire and one Nightmaster vampire. They will switch between the shield and axe you give them and their magicka as they see fit, and they have some deadly melee perks as well as their good magic ones. The main difference is that the Nightlord will use Icy Spear, where the Nightmaster tends to prefer Ice Storm, so I like the mix of area and single projectile damage. Apart from that, their stats are relatively similar. When it comes to enchantments, put Resist Fire and Fortify Health on the Vampire's Shield, and Fortify Health and Resist Magic on the Bandit Chief's Shield. On their armor, you'll find that skill enchantments like those to increase damage don't work, so for the most part, you'll just want to choose things that Fortify Health, Magicka or Stamina, increase stat regen, and add further resistances. And that concludes our latest Skyrim build. Thank you so much for watching the video, and be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to get more Skyrim content in your subscription box, and let me know in the comments which Dead Thrall is your favorite. As always, our social media links can be found in the description if you're interested, along with the link to that video on the strongest Dead Thrall in all of vanilla Skyrim. My name is Michael, thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.